Hey everybody, it's Tuesday Tip Time. This is The Coaching Educator with Rebecca M. Carroll, and this Tuesday we will be going over financial aid. Okay, let's begin. Financial aid is tricky. It's more complicated than people realize and you really need to know your options. So it's important for you to understand the total cost of attendance and that is the key and I, that's where I see people making the greatest amount of mistakes. So I wanna just start out by saying we offer a free consultation specific to your estimated family contribution, your free EFC appointment. We will give you a report that will allow you to have a general idea of what you're looking at, which is so important for when you're looking for school. So you want to understand how much the tuition is specifically going to cost you. Any mandatory fees, the room and board, book supplies, personal and miscellaneous expenses, which oftentimes are not as expensive as they are usually list, and transportation. How much is that going to cost you? So be a, being able to identify what the total cost of the college is, is important. And one of the things that we do for our clients is we actually give reports for their whole college list. But for people who are not our clients, because it's such an important subject and it's we want everybody to understand, we do a really thorough report which will help you understand what you potentially would be paying for state or private schools. So I encourage you to go to our website, thecoachingeducator.com forward slash book, look for the pig and click on that and book a free appointment. Also, you can, you can do it another way by just pressing the pig with the, the find our website, The Coaching Educator, and press the pig that you see with the dollar sign and it will take you right to that. So what drives financial aid is filling out the form, the FAFSA. And it's important for you to not do it early. I know you will hear that from everybody. Do it early, do it early. But no, we want you to be strategic. So everyone should fill this out because this aligns with merit scholarships as well as financial needs scholarships. And it's important for you to understand that. On filling out the form, it has step-by-step -step instructions. I find it easy, partly because I've filled out so many of them with students and parents, but it can be very complicated and confusing, and, and there are many errors that are made. So it's important for you to really take your time. Do not just have your child fill it out. This is definitely something that needs to be filled out by an adult. And you must be accurate. You can't just make a mistake and have them discover it. It will hold up the financial aid that's released if your child qualifies for it. So find out your estimated family contribution before you touch the thing. Even though it opens up October 1st, I can't say that enough. And we go into a much longer workshop and feel free to go to our website, thecoachingeducator.com and get on a list for that website where we go into great detail. You can ask questions, we do it online. It's important for you to do this before you touch the FAFSA. So let's go. The federal aid calculation is, is, includes quite a few things. So it's important for you to be able to answer the adjusted gross income and the students who are seniors now who are heading off to college in the year 20, in the fall of 2021, it's, you will be working off of your 2019 prior tax year. So it's important for you to know this, whether you're one parent or two, if even within a divorce, you will be working off that two years prior. Your assets, however, are going to be calculated from the day you fill it out. And again, that longer workshop goes into this in greater detail. You need to include the number of uh, people in your family and how many are in college. 
You also are asked the age of the parent. And so that's key as well. So what's not considered in the EFC calculation are all retirement accounts, your IRAs, your 401ks, your 403bs. Those are not included. Your home equity in a primary residence. And this is where there is always a pretty big error. And, it, and, and I just encourage you to be working consider working with someone to be able to fill this out um, what's not considered as well as annuities and pensions your cash value life insurance whole life policies personal possessions such as cars and boats etc those are things that are not calculated the key factor in determining aid is your expected family contribution and again we utilize this phenomenal tool and we can, we can give you an estimate. And we do it for no charge because we feel it is so important to do that. Sometimes it prevents people from going to school. You know, I'm always talking about my fabulous camera guy. He was avoiding school because he really did not know that he actually was in a good position for getting the grants and scholarships. So once I encouraged him to do this, he discovered that it was the time, the timing was right for him to get to school. So let's look at your free estimated family contribution and find out if this is really good a good time for you to be getting to school. So there are many questions that come up about your 529s and we do understand that in every state, I work with kids in various states and 529s are handled differently. But the important thing is, is a five in 529 plans it doesn't matter if the owner is the student or the parent either way a 529 plan is counted as a parent asset which is more favorable in the EFC calculation if grandparents or relatives own the 529 it's not counted as a parent or student asset but just the distributions are counted as un untaxed income the following year so this is where we want you to be strategic and it's important for you to be working with someone who can help you with that. It's, you know, you want to wait until senior year to uh, use the account and eliminate the penalty, but you need to understand um, when is the best time to be using this. And you also need to include if you are fortunate enough as a student where your grandparents are helping, Let's have them help in a way that's going to really help and not be counterproductive. I've seen kids lose financial aid because of really helpful, very generous grandparents. So there are key factors in determining this EFC. And again, I would encourage you to take advantage of our free consultation. So common questions about the UGMA and the UTMA trust accounts. So these accounts are considered assets for the student and you know they're calculated at 20 percent this is what the federal government does so it's important again for you to be very strategic so one of the things that we recommend is to kind of get them into 529 accounts and also you know so that it can be counted under the parents asset which has a lower calculation as you can see on the screen it's a 5.64 percent calculation versus the 20 percent so this is key in determining your aid with the expected family contribution and these little things can be tweaked and potentially save you thousands of dollars so how do they calculate this need-based aid calculation both federal and institutional methodology, which is used for many of the private schools, is basically your total college costs, total amount of your college costs, minus your EFC, which equals what you need out of your pocket to pay. And that's how you figure out. So when you're looking at this, the percentage of need that is met by the college is also something you should be looking at, and that's where they get the financial aid package. It is important to actually have an official financial aid package, not what the admissions counselors are saying to you, but actually to look at that full package because you may be earning a $13,000 scholarship but if you still have 28,000 left to pay, you might wanna consider another school where you have a lower scholarship, but you also don't have so much to pay. 
So that is why we work with the parents to help them understand the true costs of college. And again, here's our link, thecoachingeducator.com forward slash book. Select the button with the pig or just go to our website and press the pig with the dollar sign on it. And we will be able to walk you through what it is and give you a really nice report on what you can expect to pay. So here's some federal aid tips. Everyone should complete the FAFSA. If you wanna play sports, if you have a music scholarship, even if you have been offered a free ride, in order for them to release that money, you have to fill it out. So you wanna be accurate, you wanna be strategic, and you wanna complete it every year while you're in school. FAFSA provides asset protection for parents based on your age. So if you happen, and I have several students who have older parents, they might be the youngest or they might be the only child, but their parents are a lot older. And the FAFSA recognizes that you're getting closer to retirement and they give a little bit uh, based on that. And assets are definitely calculated differently for students and parents. And like I said, you cannot change that. It's the day you fill that form out. It's not two years previous. It's two years previous, your tax forms, but your assets are the day you fill it out. And that is why I say to people, please do not just jump on that FAFSA the minute it opens up October 1st. It is key to be strategic. So students' assets are earmarked at a higher rate than parents. So. We work with a phenomenal financial advisor who is credentialed in college planning and can assist people with that. It's very, very important for you to make sure that you're maximizing your ability to pay for school and to save money. So institutional aid is oftentimes calculated through a form. 400 private colleges use this form and it is the CSS profile. It's the College Scholarship Service. It's actually the same as College Board and um, it's the same service. And you would be going in there and filling out a form. I call it the FAFSA on steroids. It's, they actually calculate more um, against your assets, but they include more. They wanna look at more. So it's important for you to know how they do this. Um, they also include the equity of your home. That's the biggest difference. They include the equi equity in the calculation. And if your parents are divorced, they, re they want that information. So they will not process your aid until they get both. And it's quite extensive. Again, it takes a lot longer to fill this form out. Generally, you only have to fill it out once unless you've had an extreme change in your um, finances and then they will ask you to fill it out again and that's to your favor. If they're asking you to fill it out, it generally means they have more money to give, so it's important. So each state has its own state aid program for students. It's important for you to be checking that and to be sure to check the FAFSA deadlines. Even though they suggest that they're pretty strict, really Early decision is the, the most strict deadline, but for the most part, it's still in February and March. So you do not need to rush on this. What you need to rush on is making sure that you've been strategic before you actually fill out that form. So state aid typically also includes a GPA stipulation, so it's important for you to keep up your GPA. And each state will have an income and asset ceiling based on the size of your family. So that's important to know too. So you wanna be sure to check your state aid website to make sure you maximize your financial aid. So there's different types of financial aid and that's when they send you that financial aid letter, you have to know that many of it is loans and it's not loans that you wanna take. So they have the opportunity for a federal Pell Grant, if you qualify for that. They also have state aid. They have merit-based aid, in, 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 which may come under an institution grant. And also they have an institution grant or aid through additional grants. So 
any and all types of financial aid may impact your financial aid package. So it's important for you to understand that. Oftentimes they put the opportunity to have a student loan as well as uh, which are either subsidized or unsubsidized. And again, if you want to have a more detailed uh, workshop on this, please sign up for our scholarships and financial aid workshop. You can find that on our website. Just add to the list and I'll, I'll send you to I'll send you when our next one is running and it's much more detailed and explains this in a greater manner and you have opportunities to ask questions. There's also the opportunity for work study again if you qualify. You cannot just take work study. So many parents remember having work study but what they don't remember is the fact that they actually qualified to be able to have a work study opportunity which means you, the federal government states or has calculated that you qualify for financial need. You want to check your interest rates on direct federal student loans. They actually have the best interest rate. They've, they've pretty much been able to keep them at a lower rate and um, you'll be offered a particular subsidized or unsubsidized. So there's the Stafford loan which is no credit checks, variety of deferment options, extended repayment terms, and it has still has a reasonable rate. Your subsidized loans, which basically means that during school you do not have to pay interest, and then your unsubsidized, which generally has the same interest rate, but you will be charged interest as you go along. And it, and it roughly comes out to be about a hundred a hundred bucks a year. So you you might want to pay your interest while you're in school. There's also the Perkins loans which are awarded to low-income students. Again, based on the calculation of the federal government, they are subsidized. They're low interest. They have extended payment options. They're really a really great opportunity. A Perkins loan is a good loan if you are offered it. Then in many of those letters that come where it you look at it and you feel like you got so much financial aid they add a parent plus for undergraduate student this actually looks at the parents credit it also charges the parents this one impacts the parents and i am not a big fan of this loan i'm going to say up front i do not care for the parent plus loan i think you're able to get a better loan if you need to get more money through your local bank um, I feel there are enough colleges out there that your student may be not well matched for a school if the only way they can go is for a parent to be taking out $12,000 every year in a parent plus loan where the interests aren't as great as the student loan and you have to pay them off as they're in school. So it's very, very challenging. And again, that's why it is key to making that list of affordable colleges and that's why we offer that free EFC report so you can be more strategic. And we talk about being strategic doesn't mean just looking at a college on the website and seeing how expensive they are. It's understanding how they distribute financial aid and this is not going to happen. I can't explain it all in a Tuesday tip, but I can tell you that you can sign up and get a more detailed workshop on it. They Within this Parent PLUS loan, they do a credit check, so you need to know that. And they also, um, you know, they really, they offer quite a bit of money, which surprises me based on what people can afford. So again, I am really not in favor of Parent PLUS loans. I don't, I don't know how else to say that. So merit-based aid is included in financial aid packages, and that is a reward for your good grades your schooling, your GPA, things like that. It's guaranteed for four years. It typically includes, well, for the most part. You really do need to check and make sure, but most colleges, it is a four-year opportunity. For the state that I live in, uh, one of the state colleges will only offer it for two years, but they also have a large plethora of scholarships for their junior and senior year that they really want students to take advantage of. So typically it is guaranteed for four years and it generally means you have to keep a certain GPA. Also it's awarded, it's basically awarded for your academics, like I said, your GPA, your standardized score. And that's why I say to students really look at should you take that 
standardized test again because if you're really close to the mark where they are giving a lot more money, it's well worth retaking after you study. Financial aid appeal letters, they are important to do. It's important that when you're doing it, you do it the way the college expects you to do it. You can find out this information. They have generally will give you a list of reasons why they would offer more aid. You need to create a situation where you're not calling them up and saying, hey, look, I got this from this college. You want to respectfully uh, give them a reason why you want to go to that particular college and the reasons why they that you would appreciate getting more money. So you want to be nice, please and thank you, follow up with an email, and that goes a long way. And so far I really do feel like colleges do everything in their power to give a little more money, so it's important to do. But follow the procedures. Again, we go over that in great length. So private scholarships, these can be found through your local school counselor. Generally, they're putting out emails or they have a, their own web page that you can go on to. You can look at other high school websites to see what they're offering as well. Local community college financial aid is um, as well an important thing to look at. Can, is it, does it make sense to go to the community college first? Your local groups, Rotary Club, Knights of Columbus, American Legion, YMCA, look at those um, banks, local banks, oftentimes will offer a specific scholarship, especially if you're going into business. Um, you can also look at the large businesses in the area, see if that will help. There are, there are national searches, FastWeb, CapEc, and as well as collegescholarships.com, but please be aware that generally they go to people who are considered financially needy and that is based on the federal government's idea of who is needy not you so even if you're feeling like you're needy based on your your debt ratio that isn't those are not questions that are asked on any of the fafsa or the css profile they don't really ask about your debt ratio so it's important for you to understand that and not have your student waste a ton of time when most of the scholarships are based on financial need first. Setting the family expectations. I can't express enough how important this is. Have a conversation with your student about how much you can afford or are willing to pay and have the expectation around it that we're willing to pay this amount if this is where your grades are, this is how much we can afford. That will help the student understand their part in it, how many scholarships they need to try to um, secure, as well as looking at colleges that actually offer more scholarships for their particular talent. So it's important for you to do that and help your student out how much you're willing or able to pay that number helps students out even though it may be an uncomfortable situation the worst thing you can say to a student is we'll make it work we'll make it work because what i find is the majority of people that use that strategy the student has an unrealistic idea of what they can go after for colleges and they don't work as hard at getting those scholarships. So make sure you have that conversation and how much do you expect the student to pay? Students are capable of working over the summer and saving money if they know that the expectation is that they have to pay a certain amount towards their college education. I've, I've seen, seen some, some really impressive bank accounts from students who have worked for the summer when they knew they had to have either two to three to four thousand dollars saved. They were very good about saving it and that's to me very impressive but because their parents had the conversation with them that is how it created a situation where the students had a goal and it's a great goal to have over the summer. So you want to, again, compare your aid packages from each school to determine what fits best with the family after having these discussions. So how can you minimize college costs? You can prepare for your ACT or SAT, try to earn a higher score so that 
so that colleges that offer scholarship based on your GPA, your rigor of your courses, your class rank, or your ACT or SAT score, that we want to go after those colleges that offer more money. Go ahead and take AP and IB classes and, and score well. Really study for them because it's really a small amount of time to earn quite a bit of money. Research the college majors and, you know, changing majors can equate to another year. Don't be convinced that you can just go in undecided and figure out what you want to do when you get there. That oftentimes leads to two to three years longer. And now I notice that a lot of colleges are putting a six-year cost on college, and I don't like that. Four-year degrees, that's what you should be going after. Unless you're in a specialized program that is a five-year program that's that gives you more bang for your buck. You also need to consider other forms of merit aid, whether it's through athletics, through visual or performing arts. If you, you know, participated in marching band, many colleges are more than willing and happy to pay more money to students, even if you're studying another major. You want to research the colleges, Again, if you listen to one of our Tuesday tips on getting that college list together, please go back to that because this is important and this, you know, the, the better matched, the better research you do, less apt to transfer. If you transfer, oftentimes you're extending another year or two. So build your college list with affordability in mind. And of course, we're going to give you a college cost and aid comparison worksheet in this video. If you like this video, please like and share and put any comments in. Please take advantage of our EFC. It's important. Go to our website. We do this report for free before you touch that FAFSA. Don't let your student get in there and send a FAFSA that's filled out poorly. I've seen that a lot and I've had to help parents undo that. Again, this is The Coaching Educator with Rebecca M. Carroll with the Tuesday Tips. See you next week.